Are some athletes destined for greatness? Aren't we all Tiger Woods? Can't we all be just like Mike? Do we all have Muhammad Ali's determination? Or did God create Mike Tyson to entertain us? Are some athletes born with a special gift? Is that what they mean about God-given abilities? If there is such a thing, what exactly is a God-given ability anyway? And do we all have that? I decided to do some research into this, but unfortunately, there was nothing in the Bible or in the New Testament about this. So instead, I decided to learn more about the athletes themselves. And I try to figure out why they become so good at what they do. Jordan was born hungry. He came in this world eating. I mean, he <laughs> loved to eat. And I tell you, you <laughs> he could not feed him enough. Iverson's spa just knew. Hospital room, they bring this long 22-inch long child whose arms past his kneecaps. And so I said, oh my goodness, I got me a ball player. Holyfield just wanted to be loved. Only thing that I wanted to do is make my mama happy. I'm the one that got three whoopings a day. I was always in trouble. I was a classroom clown. I wanted some tension. I wanted to be loved, but you know, it's but I was going by the wrong way to do it. Far as that, it's a lot of discipline in this boy. Looking back, I know that he was much tougher on me than the other kids. If you get hurt, you crawl off the field. When you can't crawl off the field, I'll come get you. Sam Bowie also had a good relationship with his father. His father was everything to him. Everything to him. He finally got a job down at the plant. He went to work every day. I think one of the reasons why he supported me so much was he was desperate to make sure that I didn't make the same mistakes that he made. But not every superstar has a good family life. He was a police officer. He wanted me to go to the military. In Austria, kids were conditioned to follow the parents' path. But unlike other kids around me, I was very determined that I have to get out of there. Just like regular mortals, the great ones also face discrimination. Parents of other kids were terribly jealous. They would come with stopwatches and they would go to the coach afterwards and say, Gretzky played this much and my son only played that much. No kid should be able to score that many goals. And what the hell's wrong with you? But Wayne would come off the ice and he'd, he'd be uh, in, in tears from what they would say to him. The city kind of drove me out of there as a youngster. I really got to a point where I didn't like being Wayne Gretzky at 14 years old. Iverson faced a lot of uncertainty growing up. Growing up on the streets, from moving from apartment to apartment, to housing project to housing project, to watching his mom struggle to make ends meet, uh, to having to take care of his younger sisters when his mom wasn't around. He was the man of the house uh, at age 12. Fire became addicted to painkillers. Like anyone with addiction, at first you just... You, you don't think much about it even though you're doing it every day. Had it been affected my play, I would have said, hey, you know, this is killing me. But, hell, I mean, I was playing great, wasn't sleeping, was practicing fine, no one knew anything. Arnold's father arranged for him to go into the military. In 1965, at the age of 18, he got me set up with his pals from the military to become a tank driver. Michael Jordan got cut from his basketball team. He was a good ball player, but we didn't think he was good enough yet to to really make the contribution on the boss that, that uh, we felt we needed. Iverson set the bar real high for himself. i never forget this. He said, uh, I can take MJ. I said, well, I, we thought he meant one of the players that we'd give me to play. He said, I can take MJ. And, the, you know, the coaches and everybody else just said, he said, I can take Michael Jordan. Probably the most important thing. 21 years old. Um, I was playing on a great team. I was scoring a lot of goals. We were winning every night. I didn't know what I was doing. I just had fun. Gretzky over the line with Curry. Gretzky center. They score! Curry. Michael was a good student, and he had a, a lot of uh, fun in the classroom. He had a sense of humor, and he was well liked by the students. You got to have a little fun. We're going to get our work done, but we got to relax a little bit and have fun. You think God never farted? There's Mr. Miyagi up there on the thing on the board. Oh, yeah. Wax on my car. Keith Jackson 
Just the other morning I had breakfast at Tracy Rucker's house. His mama brought out 15 flapjacks. He said, Mama, take back father and flapjacks. I gotta stay hungry for the crimson tide. I wanted to go to heaven, so I took him in seven. You took him in seven. I am the king of the world. Hold it, hold it, hold I'm it. I'm pretty. Hold it, you're not that pretty. I'm a bad man. Wait, wait. Passionate commitment. I love the game so much that I would go out there and just play all day and night. Whether I was carrying groceries, whether I was doing something like that for my mom or dad, I was I always had one hand free to dribble that basketball. It appeared to me he had this insatiable desire to just win at, at, at all costs. You know, he wanted to win every game. He wanted to catch every pass. You know, he wanted to make sure that his team won. And I want the world and the cameras to hear. Who's the heavyweight champion of the world? So going back to my question about God-given ability, there is no such thing. You have to work your ass off for everything that you're passionate about. Sure, maybe we can't all be superstar athletes, but maybe you want to start up a band or go play in the senior PGA Tour when you're 50. You got a dream, you got to protect it. Maybe you're an entrepreneur and don't even know it. The most important thing is not to listen to the haters. Tell them why, Will Smith. People can't do something themselves. They want to tell you you can't do it. 